Welcome to part three of this training package, where we'll explain the reference mode activity. The first step in creating a COSLIP diagram of a complex problem is to clearly define the problem. This short video will show you how our case study defined their problem using a reference mode. In our case study, the executive director of the neighborhood house first suggested that the problem was low early development indicators. However, this was really more of an event that brought awareness to the problem. The event is a result of a pattern in the system, which is created by a system structure. COSLIP diagrams map a problem and show the dynamics of the problem. Being dynamic means that it changes over time. In order to use a COSLIP diagram to map a problem, you must first ensure that the problem is dynamic, otherwise it won't work. Hoffman, in his book on doing community-based system dynamics, defines a dynamic problem as one that involves altering a system's behavior from one dynamic, meaning the status quo or an undesired pattern, to another dynamic. We will give examples of what it means to alter the behavior from one dynamic to another in the latter slides. A reference mode is used to map the dynamics of the problem of interest and help build consensus to define the problem. The participants in the modeling session were given a reference mode for measles immunizations as an example. On the horizontal axis, we always put time, and on the vertical axis are the units of the variable of interest. In this case, the problem we're interested in is measles immunization rates. When the vaccine was first introduced in 1963, it's likely that the immunization rates were close to 100%. But over time, immunization rates have begun to decrease, and it's possible they may continue to decrease in future years. Thinking about the definition of a dynamic problem from the previous slide, it is one that involves altering a system's behavior from one dynamic, the status quo or undesired pattern, to another dynamic. The current dynamic is an undesired pattern because it decreases over time. We want to change that dynamic to an increase. So this is a dynamic problem. You'll remember from the introduction video that the executive director of the neighborhood house had, thought, had her own thoughts on the problem, which was that it was related to low resources in the neighborhood. The ED had created a reference mode of the problem prior to the group modeling session. In contrast to the immunization example, which illustrated an undesirable pattern, decreasing immunization rates, the ED's reference mode illustrated a need to change a pattern from the status quo. As always, time is on the horizontal axis, and she had the resources on the vertical axis. She mapped resources as being steady and low over a period of time, and illustrated the desired change to this pattern as increasing the resources. A reference mode can illustrate either a change in an undesirable pattern, such as the low immunization rate, or a change from the status quo, as in this example of low resources. We could have used low resources as the variable to be mapped for the group model building session, but the executive director felt that it was important for the stakeholders to be involved in defining the problem. This is why we opened it up to the group and had them create their own reference modes. After showing the stakeholders the immunization example, we then asked the group to define their problem by creating a reference mode and choosing a variable that is dynamic over time. It was explained to the group that this variable will then become the focus of the causal loop diagram later. The goal of this activity was to come to consensus about the problem of interest. The group of stakeholders were asked to brainstorm ideas for the problem variable, and as a group, we tried mapping the variables over time as a reference mode. We used the reference mode as a test to see if the problem variable would work for a causal loop diagram. For example, it was suggested that the percentage of newcomers or recent immigrants in the neighborhood affected the problem of low resources being directed to the neighborhood. However, if we try to map this variable on a reference mode, it doesn't work very well. We can show that the percentage of immigrants in the neighborhood have been increasing over time. But this is not an undesirable pattern that we want to change, so it doesn't meet the reference mode test. Another variable suggested was social connectedness. It was suggested the social connectedness of this neighborhood had been low for a long time. 
Now this suggests a status quo pattern that we want to change. After some discussion, the group decided that social connectedness was the problem of interest that they want to map. Now it's your turn. Remember the goal of this activity is to come to consensus about the reference mode and the problem being defined. There are many different types of variables that you could model, but it needs to pass the reference mode test, meaning it needs to be dynamic, so changing over time, and it needs to have a pattern that you want to change by either decreasing or de increasing it. Take a few minutes now and think about your complex problem. Can you identify a key variable of interest? Try creating a reference mode of the variable and see if it passes the test. Is there an undesirable pattern that you want to change? Or do you want to change the status quo pattern? If your variable doesn't pass the reference mode test, then try a different variable. Once you've done this, try going on to the next video, which will show you how to elicit variables for the causal loop diagram.